Good morning, Noblesville First. We're looking forward to worshiping with you on this Palm Sunday. Uh, one of my favorite things is parading through the sanctuary, waving palms and singing hallelujah. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that today altogether, but we'd still like to uh, welcome Jesus on this special Sunday. So what we're going to do is ask you right now to go out into your yard, maybe grab a couple of leaves, if you have a handkerchief or a little washcloth or something lay laying around. And then in a few minutes, when we go back to worship time together, uh, we'll have a little palm processional wherever you are. And if you'd like to share that moment with us, take a picture of it with your family and post it on our Facebook page. So stay with us, and in just a couple of minutes, our Palm Sunday worship will begin.
Good morning and welcome to Noblesville First live stream this morning, this Palm Sunday. We hope that if you're on Facebook, uh, please make a comment, check in. I know one of the great benefits of this live stream is people seeing one another and knowing that right now at this very moment, we are worshiping together and God is uniting us with his spirit on this beginning of Holy Week. I'd like to invite you to join with me now in our call to worship. It'll be a responsive one. I'll say both parts since uh, I'm the only one here in the sanctuary talking, but please join in with me there in your home. Wave high your palm branches. The Lord of life approaches. Sing with great joy for the Savior has come to us. Even the beast of burden on which he rides seems to be royal. All creation shouts praises to the King of Kings. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as had been directed to them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and had followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And now let us remember that first Palm Sunday as we sing and shout Hosanna and parade around our homes as we sing our hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Let us pray. Let your word, O God, break open our hearts this day through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may enter into this coming Holy Week with the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. This morning we'd like to lift up some <clears throat> special prayers for a congregation. <clears throat> so first of all, I lift up Mark Intrusion. <clears throat> excuse me, who is recovering from back surgery this week. Yeah, I understand he's doing well at home, so please keep him in your prayers. Also pray for those who are connected with our congregation who have contracted the coronavirus. Those persons include Brian Mills, Angela Edge, Dave Sleater, who's the son-in-law of Greg and Pam Kamak, Mike Grannon, who's the brother of Dave Grannon residing in Florida, and Melissa Fenwell, who's the granddaughter of Judy Jenkins, 
Uh, there may be others, but that's who's been brought to our attention so far. Also keeping your prayers, Zoe Terhoon and Joyce Lewis with some ongoing health challenges. And we pray for all those through our world and our country who've contracted the coronavirus throughout this duration of this crisis. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones, especially those who cannot uh, come together and, and grieve and mourn in the typical ways as we're not allowed to gather in large crowds. We pray for our health care workers, our first responders, those providing essential services which enable us to endure our isolation with food and other necessities. We pray for scientists across the globe working feverishly to develop treatments and vaccinations which will get this epidemic under control. And we pray for all of us, including our world leaders, making tough decisions, but we pray for one another that we'll each take this opportunity to know the one thing we can do right now is to practice safe social distancing, to flatten that curve, to slow down the cases so that our healthcare workers can respond. It'll be the best thing we can do to kill this virus and protect those who are most vulnerable. I invite you to join with me now in the call to prayer. Please join along with me. Blessed are you, holy God, for in Jesus Christ you came to rule in our lives, not as a king, but as a humble servant riding on a donkey. Enter into our hearts this day with your glory and meet us in this time of fear and uncertainty. May we follow with faithfulness and joy, shouting Hosanna in the highest heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us take a few moments to have some silent prayer. Take this opportunity to connect with God, to feel his presence, to feel that God is gathering us one together, one, all together as a congregation. Then I'll share a pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray at this time. God, we ask that you gather us together, each in our separate but safe places. Unite our hearts in a unity that is a mystery. As we read the eighth chapter of Romans, you remind us that your spirit is able to pray for us even when we don't have the words. We trust that that Holy Spirit is there for us now. As we find ourselves overwhelmed by the grief, by the grief that is to come by the things that we cannot control. Help us to cope and focus on the day to day, to know that you're with us and because you're with us, we can do what is best. We can do what is right. We can do what is helpful and loving and caring. We pray for the families where there may be tension and stress. We ask that you calm their anxieties, help them to look for the best in one another Help them to be the best for one another in this time of isolation. We pray for all those who are suffering. As we watch that death toll mount, as we watch the cases climb, may we not be overwhelmed by fear, but to know that in the midst of all things that you are there with us. Your Holy Spirit will comfort us. And we trust in the hope of eternal life. This week will be a strange week, a special week for us, but we'll have to do it separately as we prepare for these special services for Monday, Thursday, for Good Friday, as we'll come back together again next Sunday at Easter. May we walk with our Lord Jesus Christ and remember that he has suffered as well. May we be reminded that he went through all so very much on our behalf. And therefore, as we compare our suffering to his, we know that it's just a small, small portion. Give us that strength that we need now in this time. Help us as we remember those words which you gave to the disciples, which continue to speak to us now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to give you a warning. If you've got children in the house, uh, gather them, because in just a couple minutes we have a special children's message designed just for them, uh, put together by Amber Good, our children's ministry director. I've got a photo to show you right now. Uh, we need to have a little humor in these tragic times. So take a look at this photo and see what you think it might be. If you want to put your caption very quickly uh, in your Facebook live feed, do so at this time. Uh, got some guesses. I shared it with a few staff and some others who got a good laugh out of it, so they may already know. So if you do, don't, don't throw the answer out there for everybody else. But what do you think this is? Okay, we done guessing? All right, this is what you call social distancing baptism, all right? Uh, we don't plan to do that anytime soon, but I hope you enjoyed that little bit of humor. We have a few announcements we'd like to bring at this time. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that the hymn of the week for this coming week, this Holy Week, will be Amazing Grace. So record those uh, performances. Again, do one verse at a time. Hopefully not everybody will do the same verse and those will be put together on our behalf. Also, Good Friday, uh, we're having a special time, we're calling it a day of lament, a time to share something special with the congregation. Uh, pastors will each take an opportunity to share something on the hour, a few hours preceding our Good Friday service, that'll be that evening at seven o'clock. And some of you may have a piece of art, a song to share, uh, a scripture reading you'd like to offer, something together as a family, uh, please put those together. Uh, send those to Matt Hantelman and let him know and he's organizing that effort, the Good Friday Lament on this coming Friday. And then we need to let you know that our Holy Week services will be a little different format. Instead of the live stream like this where you just watch, you'll need to take a step using the link we're gonna provide you to a Zoom conferencing meeting. Uh, this will mean that we'll all be able to see one another. We've got the subscription that will allow up to 500 people at one time. So that means that we can actually celebrate the Last Supper together. So you'll want to get some bread, juice of some kind for that event. Um, then for Good Friday, as it involves the adoration of the cross, we're inviting you to find a cross in your home. Might be a necklace that you've got a cross standing somewhere or a painting. Uh, have that ready and to display for the Zoom conferencing experience there as well. Again, we'll send you a link that you'll log in. You, it'll, all, everyone will be muted except those speaking, uh, but we'll be able to see one another and feel that connection this Holy Week. Uh, I want to celebrate. We have 42 people as of this morning who have signed up for the Good Friday Prayer Vigil. We'll have somebody praying at home for a half an hour all through the day on Good Friday, leading up to the Good Friday service at seven. Thank you for responding so well. And more than one person can be praying at once. So if you want to go to the website and find that link, you can sign up and share your name as well to be praying during a specific time. A reminder that the office is closed, but we are answering the phone. We've got a system to answer the phone from home. So you continue to communicate with us, share your concerns. And then also remember always that the care at noblesfirst.com email address is how you communicate your prayer needs any issues going on so our pastoral care team can respond, or you can call that 24-7 number at 317-773-2590. Now, if you got your phone handy, pull it out, and you'll find that the Noblesville First app, again, go to the website, and there's instructions on how to download that app right there. But we have for our opportunities to serve several, but a couple I want to lift up. First of all, the preschool is still having their flower sale online. So you can use that link, it will take you right to the order form and you can order that. And then on April the 28th will be the pickup for that, for those flowers. We've got a safe system figured out how to put those in your trunk for you so no one has to have any personal contact with someone. You prepay on your order form so everything will be taken care of on that as well. And the other thing I'd like to lift up is, is that the teeter farm operations still have to take place. We're growing food to reduce food insecurity in Hamilton County, and so there's much work to be done. 
It's also a great thing if you want something to do with your family or you just want something to do because you're tired of sitting at home. You can go out in the outdoors where it's very safe. Just be sure that you uh, email Pastor Aaron Hobbs uh, that you're interested. They'll be sure to schedule, schedule you so that you can safely uh, be there out there and work. I think that takes care of our key announcements this morning and the opportunities to serve. So at this time, uh, we hope that you have your children handy as Amber Good shares this children's message on this Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday, and do you know what happened on Palm Sunday? There was a parade. I like parades. Do you like parades? They're exciting to watch, aren't they? There's lots of things happening, lots of things to see, people singing and dancing and yelling and mascots who throw candy and clowns and, and uh, tractors and old cars and animals. There's people in the streets or lining the streets waiting to see the parade. And it's bright, it's colorful, it's noisy. What a great time. I like parades. So I want you to imagine that we're sitting out alongside a dusty road. Now, you came out early in the morning to get a good seat along the side of the road. And you've been here for a very long time. You've been waiting and waiting for something, anything to happen. And off in the distance, you see there is a cloud of dust rising up. That means people are coming down the road. So the parade must be about to begin. And soon as it gets closer, you start to hear yelling and shouting and singing and cheering and people are all standing up and cheering and they're starting to tear down palm branches and they're waving them in the air and they're shouting and they're singing and they're throwing their branches down on the dusty ground and then they they're taking their blankets and their coats and they're throwing those on the dusty ground as well and soon it's like a tapestry type path, a very colorful path. And you know who comes down fancy paths? It must be a king. Oh, this is exciting. There's a king coming. And as they get closer and you're able to see who the crowd is surrounding and well, he doesn't look like any king that you would think. He doesn't look like Caesar. You were maybe expecting a a wonderful chariot with splendid horses or maybe even a fancy chair with servants carrying it but this guy he looks normal he looks like you or me looks like any of us here and he's riding on a donkey a young donkey which means he's probably a young scraggly looking old donkey but the people surrounding Jesus and this donkey they're happy and they're joyful and they're glad and they're singing and they're waving their branches and putting it on the ground in honor before him. Because this is the guy that they know who does miracles, who heals the blind, brings hearing to those who have been deaf, and they're happy. And when you're happy, you make noise, right? What do you think? Do you think it was a loud and noisy thing going on here? I do. So you know what? Let's grab your branches that you've picked out before now or maybe you've got a scarf or um, maybe a sock. Whatever you have found in your house or laying around outside, let's get that. And everybody on this side, when I raise the branch, you yell, Hosanna! And everybody on that side, when the branch is raised, you yell, in the highest. Okay, so it's going to be Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Okay, so everybody over here yell Hosanna. And everybody over here, Hosanna in the highest. Very good. Okay, so when I raise it, everybody, grown-ups included, everybody yell out loud. And then when I put the branch down, we'll be ready to close out in prayer. Okay, let's give this a try. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Good job, guys. 
let's lay our our flags or branches down and bow our heads in prayer please blessed are you Jesus we honor you today as the Messiah and our Lord and Savior Hosanna Hosanna in the highest amen I'd like to now share our stewardship moment of course we can't pass the offering plate on Sunday morning so we're going to be showing uh, the opportunities, the ways that you can give at this time through online giving, write a check, um, use your Noblesville First app. Uh, but while that's going on, let me share the news that's involved with our finances. Monday, our administrative board meeting met via Zoom. And we made the decision to fully employ our staff during this crisis. We made that decision, uh, number one, because so far you have been giving so well. Don Gustafson, our treasurer, shared the report that as of March, our giving uh, for 2020 for the month of March was at 97% of what it was for March 2019. Of course, we know we had a couple of Sundays we did gather together, and that will probably change, but we just feel your early response is very strong, and so we want to keep our staff. And so we've instructed those who cannot perform their duties uh, now currently because live worship's not happening or because the office is closed down to redirect their efforts to something involved in our Noblesville First Ministry that benefits. So we've got people joining our pastoral care team and making phone calls to the congregation. We've got people putting in hours out of the Teeter Organic Farm. Uh, others are doing some of the projects in the office that we have and just coming together safely for those special projects. Others are putting out special content to add to what we're put in on all of our social media platforms that help keep us connected, encouraged as a congregation. Uh, Friday, we submitted an application for the payroll protection program that was established by the two, million, two trillion stimulus package program by Congress. So we ask that you pray for that, that it will, we will receive acceptance because it'll not only benefit our church staff, but it'll benefit our church preschool, and the ministry of the Teeter Organic Farm. So please keep that in your prayers as well. At this time, let us pause and pray for God to gather our offerings at this time. Lord, we thank you for your generosity, your faithfulness. We appreciate those who are taking a step of faith and know that this crisis will not last forever, to know that you'll be with us, to know that you're gonna unite us in special initiatives that will defeat this virus. So help us to be trusting, help us to be generous, help us to reach out to those who are especially most vulnerable, most impacted by this crisis at this time. May we be generous as you are always generous with us through Christ who is our Lord, amen.
Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we hear your good news proclaimed. Bless our time together and our conversations that follow. In Jesus' name, amen. One of my first clergy mentors was Reverend Deborah Grady, who I served in ministry with at the Brightwood Community Center and St. Paul Brightwood United Methodist Church at 25th and Station in Indianapolis while attending seminary. Deborah was a wonderful person with a booming singing voice, a great laugh, and the ability to be grateful no matter what. She did not have an easy life, but yet she maintained a hope and joy-filled attitude of gratitude throughout, and it was contagious. Have you ever met anybody like that? What do you think enabled them to have that type of attitude? Well, it's likely most of you have encountered someone like this along the way. Someone who, even though they may not have had uh, an easy life, uh, were always able to be content and thankful. And then on the other hand, you've probably met people who have had fairly, rel- you know, fairly easy lives, but yet um, find it impossible to be content or thankful. I think the reason people can go either way is because gratitude has nothing to do with the circumstances of your life and everything to do with your vision of God. If you have trouble being thankful, it isn't new circumstances that you need. It's a new vision of God. As we near the end of this season of Lent and enter this most holy of weeks, it is fitting that we hear the words of praise from the Psalms on Palm Sunday. The Psalms were the ancient worship book of both Hebrews and the early church. In today's Psalm, we hear the words, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Those words from Psalm 118 were as familiar to the Hebrews as the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy might be for us today. They were spoken especially during this festive season of Passover. So it's no surprise as Jesus enters Jerusalem during Passover that the crowd began to sing this hymn once again. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Bind the festal procession with branches. They were singing it again, just like they had done before every Passover before. But the Gospels make it clear that Jesus didn't just ride into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey when a crowd just happened to be standing around the road singing Psalm 118. No, the people this time were singing this Thanksgiving specifically for Jesus because they had witnessed what he had been doing uh, in his ministry uh, leading up to this point. Perhaps in that crowd was uh, little old Zacchaeus who had been forgiven for, for his sins or maybe blind Bartimaeus, who had been given his sight, or the leprous man who had been made well, or the centurion's uh, paralyzed servant who had been healed. Or maybe even old Lazarus had gotten cleaned up after rising uh, from the dead. Maybe he was even there. All of them had received wonderful healing through the miraculous work of Jesus. And the people were grateful for the grace that they had received. This responsive gratitude is the first kind of gratitude that the Bible calls us to. Responsive gratitude shows that we are just paying attention to the blessings of life and the ways that God is at work around us. Just like the people who lined the streets in the Palm Sunday parade, we too realize that Jesus has been good to us. So we join together in the festal procession of those who give thanks. A few, few weeks ago, my wife, Michelle, had a health scare following an unusual mammogram. And as I sat in the waiting room for her, waiting to hear uh, the news from her follow-up diagnos- diagnostic appointment, uh, we both thanked God when the report came back that she did not have cancer. I'm sure all of you had, had a moment like this of instantaneous gratitude following a particular circumstance of life where all you could do was say, thank you, God. Or in the mortal words of Ricky Bobby on Talladega Nights, thank you, little baby Jesus. The Thursday worship crowd said that was a good one to leave in tonight, so I decided I'd uh, leave that in uh, for us here on Sunday. But you don't have to be particularly spiritual to learn how to offer circumstantial gratitude. You just have to be paying attention because it could be a whole lot worse. And in fact, it is a whole lot worse for someone. But yet it is always amazing to me how many people simply refuse 
to give thanks. They choose instead to focus on their loss, their hurt, what life has not given them, instead of the fact that God is always there by their side. But that is their choice. Neither complaint nor gratitude comes natural to us. What is natural is the fact that life is not always fair and it will often hurt. What comes next, though, is up to each of us. You can respond by either complaining or by giving thanks. Those who choose gratitude choose not to be mere victims. They choose to determine their own response to the disappointments of life, and they choose to defy their disappointments by finding a reason to give thanks. And this is not easy at first, especially if you prefer complaining. But you do have the God-given freedom to choose your response to life. Choose gratitude. But responsive gratitude and circumstantial gratitude are only the first two steps toward living a deeper spiritual life. If you keep reading and praying the Psalms, eventually they will lead you to an even deeper and more profound form of gratitude toward God. That is what I like to call subversive gratitude. And that is the type of gratitude that was on display that first Palm Sunday as Jesus rode into Jerusalem like a king. Subversive gratitude does not wait for circumstances to set an agenda to which we then respond. It doesn't passively wait to see what the world will throw at you next and then challenge you to find a reason to still be grateful. Rather, subversive gratitude, as Craig Barnes reminds us, is world-creating. It subverts the pain-filled world that we hear about on the news and the pain-filled lives we often see reflected back in the mirror by insisting on giving praise to God who is not done with creation, a God who is alive and active, working to bring all things into God's loving arms. Remember that these praise psalms were sung at Passover, which was the identity-creating event for the Hebrew people, when God freed them from slavery and brought them through the Red Sea. In the Exodus, God miraculously changed the way it is. God overthrew the most powerful ruler in the world to create hope for those who had no hope and to create a present and a future for his beloved children. So the Psalms do not teach us to simply find some weak reason to give thanks while being trapped in slavery. The Psalms don't tell us to just go ahead and give thanks because, you know, things could always be worse. And they don't teach us to be contented servants to our own addictions or pain or the world's injustices. No, they call us to envision another way of life because as Passover reminds us, God can change the way it is. And that is ultimately why we are thankful. Verse 22 from today's psalm says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The Hebrews sang this phrase as they approached the temple. A people who were rejected were given a place in the world and a place to worship by God. And so they gave thanks to God in worship because this small nation surrounded by powerful empires was proclaiming the possibility of a different world. This subversive gratitude has the unique power to not just recognize the blessings of God, but to proclaim a blessedly different way of life. This summer, while uh, my family was on sabbatical, um, I had the opportunity to travel and see many amazing cathedrals in Europe. Um, I saw a lot. Michelle and Emma saw a few. Uh, They didn't quite like it as much as I did. Um, Before I was a teacher and now a preacher, I wanted to be an architect. So I've always been uh, impressed with uh, the architecture of cathedrals and just the beauty of them. And while in Paris, I saw the Basilica Saint-Denis and heard an amazing story of seeing in a different way that now seems even more important as we battle through this pandemic together. Um, At the beginning of the 12th century, the story goes, uh, in France, medieval Europe was filled with reasons to be afraid. Plagues periodically ravaged the population. The new monarchies 
uh, were unstable and the church was in bad need of reform and the economy was still futile. In the midst of all of these reasons to despair, the abbot of the monastery in Saint-Denis discovered a new grateful vision of heaven on earth. Abbot uh, Sujet had the audacity to reconstruct his church with a new architectural form that we now call Gothic. Yes, he took a perfectly good church and transformed it. It's kind of like jumping out of a perfectly good plane, but he did this. And he and his architects created a vision of heaven on earth with pointed vaults that could reach up to the sky. Uh, they used flying buttresses, which allowed for thin walls to be adorned with large windows to let light in. And then later on, uh, were uh, added stained glass windows that are just beautiful. If you get a chance, just Google it. Uh, Basilica, S-T period, D-E-N-I-S. It's just beautiful. It's amazing. You'll have to check it out. Well, all of this was revolutionary, not just architecturally, but also culturally. The Gothic cathedral uh, made an incredible claim to the world that heaven had descended to earth. God was with us and anything was now possible. And then over the next hundred years, other scientific, political, religious, and technological revolutions took place. Um, and people began to grasp this vision and believe that heaven and earth have met and then they became grateful and new creativity emerged. You know, I always like thinking of the, of the Holy Spirit like that, that it just is this energy of creativity that just moves and moves and God makes amazing things happen. So the gratitude uh, of this often forgotten monastic abbot helped create another world, as have so many other people uh, throughout history who believed, as some of my new friends do, that God did not stop writing in our lives when the book went to print. At the basis of all these new world-creating visions was the day that we celebrate now, the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday. And on this Palm Sunday, we celebrate the subversive subversive, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the one who is the stone which the builders rejected, but nonetheless has become the chief cornerstone. According to Matthew and Mark, Jesus himself quoted Psalm 118, reminding the people of this fact. Jesus was claiming that he was now the temple, the meeting place with God. God could no longer be constrained or constricted by a, a specific place. In Jesus Christ, they and you have a meeting place with God, and the result is a heart filled with gratitude. No matter how tough this pandemic gets, when we lose our jobs or have to eat everything, no matter how awful or despairing life may seem, your gratitude, your subversive gratitude, refuses to give in to the disappointments of the present, but instead keeps pushing on. This subversive gratitude envisions a whole new way of life for a Savior who is ridden into our lives. With Jesus, anything can happen. With Jesus, anything is possible. Shout loud, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we move to our scripture, which was shared by the Hantleman family, uh, it's got a little bit out of order today. Hope you... Uh, our understanding as we work with this uh, video technology. But I'd also like to make a special mention about the passing of Vic Harbor, one of our uh, very loved members this week. Uh, many in the community know that Vic um, was a principal at North Elementary School for many, many years. And I just want to share a quick conversation with, with Thelma. She is in a good place. She's very at peace uh, for Vic and for herself. And she's made it clear that we will not be having any kind of services for Vic until we can all gather together here in this sanctuary. So please pray for Thelma and the rest of the family at this time. Good morning. Our scripture reading today comes from Psalm 118, verses 19 to 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give the thanks to the Lord. 
This is the gate of the Lord, and the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have became my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good. For his steadfast love endures forever. You As we come to this time of communion, it's going to be a little bit different today because we're uh, taking it in different places. But I'd encourage you to find uh, something around the house. If you have some bread and some grape juice, that's fine. If you have uh, some other things to drink or another type of bread or something at home, whatever you have is fine today. Uh, we're going to go through a, a short liturgy here and bless the elements uh, where you are and where we are. And then we'll participate in communion together. So, as United Methodists, we have an open table, uh, which means all of you are welcome to participate with us today. Uh, we believe because Jesus Christ is the host and he is uh, welcoming to all people, uh, so are we. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and at home and on these gifts of bread and wine and all the gifts that we present to you this day. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with, each, with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen.
And now go with these words of blessing and benediction. We have gathered with the crowds crying Hosanna. Even if we were silent, the stones themselves would have called out. We have shared the hope for a world about to be changed, and then it changed. We have walked with another crowd, one that called words of scorn and condemnation. And now we follow the crowd as it leads out to the cross. And yet even as the world grows dark, we do not lose hope. Because God is with us. God will be with us. We are not alone. And so we watch the crowd and we follow. May the peace of Christ be with you now and forevermore. Amen.